some of you were here last month when we talked a little bit about St. Mark's Bookshop, and I'm very lucky to be joined this month by the co-owner and co-founder of St. Mark's Bookshop, Mr. Terry McCoy. Let's hear it for you. Uh, Terry is the co-owner, co as I mentioned, the co-owner of St. Mark's Bookshop and also the co-founder. Uh, Terry, you've been in New York for how long? Well, uh, I, I came in the summer of 68. Summer of 68. And what was, what was this neighborhood like when you first moved here? It, uh, well, it, it was the center of the uh, East Village at that time was St. Mark's Place between 2nd uh, and 3rd. It was crazy then. It was psychedelic. It was uh, like a huge carnival every night. Uh, and I worked in a bookstore there that was already there. My first job was the Intergalactic Trading Post. And then I... Uh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I went from there to the east side. Next <laughs> Uh, but uh, we were uh, uh, we were a the counterculture bookstore of New York. And that was East Side Books. East Side Books, right. yeah, yeah. And uh, we uh, uh, on the, the when the Fillmore was open, the Fillmore East. I mean, this the uh, the bookstore was just uh, you know filled to capacity. Of course, people were asking, you know. Uh, for Jim Morrison's, uh, they'd say, uh, you got the laws of new creatures? <laughs> uh, uh, that was the name of his book of poetry uh, at that time. Uh, and uh, uh, the, there were four or five of us that worked at that bookstore that decided, you know, that, that store was beginning to fail and it was faltering. And, um, we thought, you know, we know how to run a bookstore. Let's start our own. And uh, so we did. And this was in the 70s. And we um, caught the wave of the 70s when the East Village, well, the East Village sort of, okay, like Hay Nash Square, went all the way up, kind of exploded. Went all the way down again. <laughs> and the uh, bookstore, I'm sorry to cut you off, but that's that is St. Mark's Books. Yeah. When you left East Side Books with those four or five guys, yeah, you founded St. Mark's Books we started, on St. Mark's Place. We started the St. Mark's Bookshop on St. Mark's Place. Five guys. We all this is interesting. We could we all uh, we all had an apartment in the East Village which we could pay for on a bookstore salary. Do you remember what the rent was? Ooh. Uh, yeah, my rent was eighty-five dollars. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, it was you. amazing. <laughs> and, uh, In constant dollars, though, that's like a hundred and ten dollars a month. So, like, let's be fair, all right? And also, please don't say fuck you to my guest, just like, <laughs> just like common courtesy. But anyway, I'm sorry, Terry, go on. Uh, yeah. I know that you're drinking an entire bottle of wine, and you're clearly underage, but hey, no worries. Go ahead, Terry, please, tell us the story uh, okay. that's much more important. You know, there was, um, there was something happening then as the, as the neighborhood came back. I mean, everybody knows about CBGBs. Uh, you know, it was a bar that you could walk into, and there would be bands playing, uh, and uh, this group television, everybody was talking about them. They were really the first uh, group, and that group uh, included Richard Hell and Tom Verlaine. Whose music we played as our intro music at this very show, you may notice. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. synchronicity, am I right? You're all very impressed, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, there, were, uh, there was an art world that was starting down here that was saying, no, we don't need the galleries in so Soho was where the galleries were then, not in Chelsea. Uh, but it was, you know, it was ruled by the art elite. So people started their own galleries, art galleries. A woman named Gracie Mansion uh, had a gallery <laughs> in her apartment, in Given her bathroom. And she became very, very successful, and uh, uh, there was, and uh, you know, many artists came out of that scene. 
there were film filmmakers. There were some filmmakers who started then. There was a uh, there was a uh, one of the storefronts on St. Mark's between second and third. St. Mark's between second and third was the main drag then. I should explain to the audience that there was no Chipotle at the time <laughs> and no supercuts. <laughs> and the uh, yeah, there weren't even. Um, there wasn't even an auto mat where you could buy pre-made cupcakes, so it's a little different. It was a little different. Terry, let me ask you something. Oh, like, so St. Mark's started. St. Mark's bookshop started on St. Mark's, really, when, when in the in like you said, like in the height of St. Mark's. Um, how does how does it? Uh, it's sort of a two-part question. How how is St. Mark's bookshop different from your average bookstore, and how does it? How do you feel that it reflects the neighborhood? Well, I, mean, I think I think every independent bookstore kind of ends up reflecting its neighborhood. I mean, you, no matter what, who you are, you start a bookstore, you think you're going to have, uh, you know, uh, you're going to sell a lot of romance novels or something, whatever. First thing you know, it's what people begin to ask for. And it's, uh, and it's you put a book in the window and everybody starts coming in and asking about that book, that kind of thing. You begin to learn. And so we really, uh, we really reflect the East Village, and we the East Village uh, is an unusual neighborhood, and our bookstore became an unusual bookstore. There was this crazy thing with the uh, French uh, post-structuralist philosophers that was really <laughs> starting to happen in the in, at that time, and these 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 people were they were philosophers, but they were also super kind of chic. They would wear. It'd be people with black leather blue jeans, you know, who would be buying books by Derrida and Roland Barthes and that kind of stuff. And you had like a lot of readings with uh, with uh, authors like that too. In the in the, you still, I mean, you still have readings for yeah, we have, yeah, events we're, we're, we're known for that. I mean. Different crazy kinds of readings. Our, our readings go. You have Chichek recently, yeah. Hmm? Are you had, am I pronouncing that wrong? This Slovenian oh, philosopher. Chichek? Yeah. Is it? I, I don't know how yeah, that little he, curved uh, yeah. accent mark works. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, no, he's, he read there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was one. He's he's one of those crazy philosopher guys. <laughs> right, exactly. That has his phone. I remember yeah. when we spoke when we spoke on the phone. You told me that. You don't stock Dan Brown books. You did stock Sarah Palin's book, and you sold two total copies. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. So <laughs> the current location is on Third Avenue, right? And the building is owned uh, by. Yeah, we moved. Uh, we were on St. Mark's for a long time. We were on the, on St. Mark's for uh, uh, in two different locations for about 15 years. Then okay, we, uh, I think we have a picture of that right here. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There we go. There's the oh, other yeah, one. This one. Yeah. This one. This is actually from the yeah this is the long live books and readers. This is actually one of the last days of the yeah, St. Mark's location. This is a uh, this is a Korean barbecue place. Yeah. <laughs> aren't, aren't they all? <laughs> yeah, it says here though. I like this. It says, "Dear friends, St. Mark's Bookshop will survive." And uh, yeah. this is but this is the move to the Third Avenue space. Which actually, Pat, if you can give us another slide, this is the exterior of the building. Yeah. Or we're down here. One more slide, please. It's, it's, Here's the interior. Yeah. Right. And if we do, I think even one more slide we have, yeah, so these are the stacks. If you look here, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> on the left there is actually, a, this is the arrangement for a reading. On the reading, yeah, yeah. So um, can we talk a little bit before we go about the move? Um, what, what's the current state of St. Mark's Bookshop? Well, uh, we're, we're in trouble again, folks. Uh, and we are going to be moving. Uh, we are going to be moving if we can swing it. We've got an Indiegogo campaign going. We're trying to raise money. We need to raise more. If anybody knows anybody with a lot of money, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know. Uh, we, uh, we have a lease in negotiation here on 3rd Street, just west of A. Uh, it's a it's a smaller storefront, so it's not going to be this big. That's, that's me with Ann Wallman, uh, who is... Um, one of the great poets of the uh, St. Mark's Poetry Project, uh, which was founded at the St. Mark's Church, 10th Street and 2nd Avenue. Uh, she is like the duenna of uh, the poetry scene. 
uh, in the East Village. And this is actually a video still. If you want to, if you want to learn more about St. Mark's Bookshop, there's a few videos online about it. This is, if you go to, um, actually, Terry, could you step back for a second? I made this slide too large. Uh, you go to stmarksbookshop.com. You can watch this video. It's about a four-minute video about the bookstore. And if you go to bit.ly slash St. Mark's Move, or just the same website, uh, you can donate to their Indiegogo campaign. This is a screenshot as of today. Uh, they've reached about half of their goal. Yeah. We've got 19 days left to raise $25,000, yeah. which sounds difficult, but they've already raised about $25,000. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, if uh, everyone in this audience donates a couple thousand dollars, <laughs> 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 Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to put this slide back up at the end of the show. If you do want to go on your smartphones, uh, please don't do it right now because we have another great guest coming up. But if you want to go and, and just save that link or something, and I'm also going to uh, I'm going to post all of this information online on our Facebook and Twitter tomorrow. Uh, and please uh, donate to St. Mark's Bookshop and keep bookstores that don't cater to the mass interests and only sell Bibles and Harry Potter alive. Uh, Terry, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Okay, thank you. Terry McCoy.